Hi, welcome to another video. So, Ader got some upgrades over the past few weeks that I didn't cover in depth because they weren't that big. But there are some good upgrades now that are worth covering a little. Plus, I also wanted to show you guys a very cool thing I was able to do by changing the architect mode a little and making the free Mistral API perform significantly better than before. Let's first talk about the new upgrades quickly. After the last Ader update video I did, there have been two upgrades. The first release after the video added some improvements to the read-only option. The read-only option now supports shell-style autocomplete of the full file system. If you don't know about read-only, it allows you to mention files in Ader that can only be read by Ader, but not edited. For example, mark down files for rules and other materials I showed you in the previous video. Previously, you could add files within the repo in read-only, but you couldn't add files outside of the current repo or directory. But now, you can do that easily, so you can have a common file. So, for example, if you add markdown files for rules and don't want to keep copying files to each new project, you can now just keep the file somewhere common outside of the current project directory and add that file in read only. And it will read that file too, which wasn't possible before. It's a cool new feature. It still auto-completes for the paths inside the repo or directory you're working in, just like before. So, that's good. Apart from that, there's now support for globs. So, if you want to tell Ader not to write to an entire directory, you can just add the folder name and a wildcard character to read only, and it will handle it. You can also prevent it from editing any Python file or anything similar. So, that's super cool. The yes operator has also been renamed to yes always. Basically, if you start Ader with this option, you won't need to approve anything, and it will automatically approve actions with yes. I don't usually use it, but if you want, you can. The config file also now supports standard YAML list syntax. So, you can list items in the config file without using brackets. Instead, you can just add a dash and the items you want, and it will treat it as a list. So, that's super cool. It also now does sanity checks on the editor model at launch. There's also a new skip sanity check for repos, which skips sanity checks for large repos. This is helpful if you use Ader in large repos, as you may not want sanity checks there, which can also take some time. So, you can now skip it with this option. There's also a bug fix for architect mode, which now handles control C properly. The repo map is now deterministic, with improved catching logic as well. So, that's also cool. It also has an improved commit message prompt. So, the commit message should be pretty good now. These were the major updates in this version. There's also another version after this. I mentioned this version briefly in the Claude 3.5 sonnet testing video, but I didn't go into much detail. Anyway, it now has full support for sonnet. It also has improved formatting of added and read only files above the chat prompt which means it has better prompting when read-only files are added. There's also improved support for O1 models by more flexibly parsing their non-conforming code edit replies. This means there's much less chance now that code returned from O1 will not be applied, as it used to happen sometimes due to O1 not supporting system prompts. There's also a new corrected diff edit format prompt where only the first match is replaced, and a new stronger whole edit format prompt asks for clean file names. It now also offers to add env files to the gitignore file, so that your API keys don't get leaked when you push to a repo without adding the file to gitignore file. Next, it ships with a small model metadata JSON file to handle models not yet updated in LightLM. It also has model settings for O1 models on Azure. 
There was also a minor release after this, which added image support for new Sonnet. I had this issue as well, but it's now fixed. So, that's good. These are the major updates in Ader. Let me also show you these new updates in usage. First of all, just get your Ader installation upgraded by using pip install upgrade Ader chat. Now, when you start Ader, you can now use the read-only operator, and you'll now have autocomplete suggestions for the whole file system, so you can reference something from outside the project directory as well quite easily. You can also now add files to read only with wildcard characters, or as many people call it, globs. So, you can define a whole folder if you don't want Ader to work on specific files. You can also add an extension if you don't want it to touch specific file formats. Apart from that, you can now define similar items in the Ader config YAML file as well. You can create these config files within the project directory, and when you start Ader in that project, it will automatically take it up. You can also add your read-only files here if you don't want to add them individually in every session. Also, you can now use lists in the config file. So, to define multiple files or multiple values in any option, you can just add them as lists, which is amazing and easy to read. Also, if you use the yes option in your config file, change it to yes always because it has been renamed. And when you start Ader, you'll also need to use yes always instead of yes if you use it. So, that's one thing to consider. The new Claude 3.5 Sonnet is also added as the default model now, which I also mentioned in the Claude testing video. So, that's also good to see. And now, it should support images as well, which was giving errors before. That's also good to see. So, these are the major changes you can see directly. Other things are more in the background. So, you can't see them, but they'll generally give you better results now. Now let me show you what I was able to do to make Mistral's free API perform significantly better. First, I started with the architect mode. This is how I have my Ader config file set up. Here, I mention the architect model and editor model. Both of them refer to the CodeStrel model because I use that daily, and it's free without any rate limits. You can check out my specific video on that API. I'll link it in the description. Anyway, I also have architect mode set to true because I want Ader to start in architect mode. You can also set these items in line when starting Ader, but that's a hassle, so it's better to set it up in a config file like this. Config files have the same options as inline, so you just need to mention them with the values, and it will make your life easier. Now, you can also see I have another item here, which is the read option. In the read option, I have the rules markdown file, which I generally have for the rules, and I also have another one called prompt. If we look at the prompt file, you can see this is what it says. This is a basic prompt where I ask both the architect and editor models to think step by step, and I also ask them to make sure they ask me if they don't have something. So, this is what I do. After this, you can use it and get pretty good results. For a simple example, I create a simple landing with this prompt. On the left, you can see a landing that was made with just simple settings without any markdown or anything. While on the right, you can see a landing page that looks much better than the left one and works well. This was done super easily by implementing architect mode with Ader, and I think it's super cool to use. Many people call it prompt chaining or chain of thought. I think it's great because you can get better results with a free tool, which is obviously good to see. I have been experimenting with this stuff, so I thought to share. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel 
through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the Join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.